Okay, welcome back to another brew day. So today I'm brewing up an Indian pale lager. Well, more like a pseudo Indian pale lager, but we'll get onto that in a moment. Or cold IPA, what else do they call it? Hoppy lager, whatever I don't want to call it. But basically it is pills in the mall, um, quite a bit of hops, and I was hoping to use uh, lager yeast. Um, but I've stuffed up again in um, my schedule because I'm actually going to be away in about, well, going away in about uh, 10 to 12 days. So I planned this to be a proper use lager yeast, ferment it low, 12 degrees, probably about a week, and then slowly ramp it up for a diastole rest, dry hop it, cold crash it again. <laughs> and I simply just haven't got time. My, my schedule doesn't allow for that process. So um, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna be using this um, Kentucky common yeast from Cross My Loof, essentially the same as, uh, or from what I gather, it's essentially the same as the uh, Magro Jack's California Lager. So it kind of gives you that sort of crisp lagery um, sort of result but you're fermenting at ale temperature so this is going to allow me to ferment much warmer probably what was it the range is 13 to 22 so i'll probably use probably ferment this at about sort of 19 20. i suspect it will be done in about four or five days give it a few days to sort of you know clear itself up i can then dry hop it and then um cold crash it so this should now give me plenty of time to get it brewed, get it fermented, dry hopped, cold crashed, in the keg before I go away. So this should be kegged on Friday evening before I go away on a Saturday. So um, the recipe, Indian Pale Lager. So it's gonna hopefully turn out about 4.6%. Um, this is a 21 litre batch. So it's going into a corny keg, probably gonna lose a couple of litres at the bottom of the fermenter. Um, with the, the trub and the dry hop. So I should end up with about 19 litres in the keg. That's what I'm hoping. <clears throat> um, so brew in the bag, 30 lit 35 litre kettle is what I use. So going with the usual process, um, I'm gonna be using spotless water, which is a reverse osmosis water. So starting with completely clean slate and I'll then be adding back in my, my salts. I haven't got those in this quite yet, but uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna go into detail on water anyway. You can kind of, it's best to probably calculate that yourselves anyway. But the recipe is um, for this 21 litre batch, four kilograms of crisp Euro pills malt and 200 grams of Vienna malt. So I bought this kind of pre-weighed from Cross My Loof. Um, very good service. I ordered late on Friday night and it actually was delivered to my door on Sunday. So um, shout out to Cross My Loof, fantastic service as usual. Um, also got my hops from there. They, in my opinion, have the freshest hops. Um, best quality hops so uh, this recipe has 165 grams of hops in it so yeah this it's going to be a fairly hop forward uh, lager um oh, i can smell those um so uh 60 minute edition 15 grams of magnum um, which is going to give me 23 ibus and then the next hop edition is not to a hop stand so nothing in between I'm doing a 20 minute hop stand at 80 degrees. And in that, I'm gonna have 25 grams of Citra, 25 grams of Motueka, and 25 grams of Nelson. Um, as I said, get that fermenting. Then I'm gonna dry hop it for probably two or three days with a further 25 grams of Citra, 25 grams of Motueka, 25 grams of Nelson. So that is pretty much it. I'm hoping for a nice, crisp, clean, hoppy lager. Um, still winter here in the UK, so I know this probably sounds like a summer beer, but this is kind of what I like. Um, yeah, so I think this is gonna be a good one. So the Nelson and the Motueka are both 2023 harvest, 
Um, so yeah, this year's harvest essentially. And the Citra is 2022 harvest. Yeah, I mean, this is gonna be hopefully very, very nice and delicious. Um, Crossed my loaf, kind enough to include a free Irish moss sachet with my order as well. So I'm gonna be using that instead of the usual protoflock tablet. I've never used Irish moss before, so hopefully it turns out all right. And the only other thing I'm new I'm gonna be doing this time is, because I want a nice, crisp, crystal clear uh, lager, um, which I'm hoping is achievable with a 75 gram dry hop, I'm gonna be maybe testing out gelatin. So seen a few people using it, uh, the guys, the Oyster Boys, I think they did, uh, I think they use it quite often, the little dried uh, gelatin crystal things. I'm gonna try adding that directly to the keg um, and it will hopefully clear out the beer. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Nice bit of uh, hoppy lager -y type thing, India Pale Lager. Um, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. So. I'll get it brewed, get a bit of footage on the way, and I will see you at the end for the tasting. Cheers. Here it is. So um, this was what I intended to be, my Indian Pale Lager stroke uh, cold IPA, um, obviously brewed with lager yeast, but as I've explained, um, co totally miscalculated at the time I needed to do it and uh, when my holiday was about to uh, start. So I was actually going away. So I had to kind of readjust, I changed it up swap the yeast out for um, an ale yeast and um, fermented it much more straightforwardly, if that's the right word. Uh, brewed it, dry hopped it, cold crashed it, kegged it the day before I went away um, and that's where it's been for the last six weeks. So this is six weeks on and um, yeah, so finished at 4.5% Finished at, um, the final gravity was 1.008, I believe. Um, so yeah, um, I think as I said at the start, I was gonna use gelatin to make it a nice clear beer. So clearly you can see something didn't happen there, which um, I freely admit in my rush to get it kegged, I 
completely forgot to add the gelatine to the keg. So therefore, uh, it's not clear. And for some reason also, it's turned out quite hazy. Um, I was speaking to one of the guys at the local homebrew club and they told me that they've used that uh, Kentucky common yeast a couple of times and um, it's turned out quite hazy every time they dry hop. So that might explain it, a couple of other reasons, but I don't really care to be honest if it's clear or not. It's clearly not a IPL anymore. So um, I guess what we'd have to call it is a pale ale, maybe extra pale ale. It's very, a very light straw colour. I don't know if you can kind of get that colour on the video. Um, but yeah, it's quite an attractive sort of darkish straw colour. Um, hazy, obviously. Um, I think, I can't remember what carbonation was, but it's not highly carved. It's reasonably low carbonation, but it has got some carb. You can't see it through the opaqueness of the beer itself, but it uh, has got some carbonation. It's been in the fridge, so it's quite cold. So there it is. It did have a head when I poured it. But, um, Got a little bit, but yeah, it's got it's got a reasonable head on it. Um, what does it smell like? Well, very nice actually. So the mix of sort of tropical fruits and citrus, got that sort of slight, um, I don't know, catty, cat's piss type smell that you get from the citra, um, but in a pleasant way, if cat's piss can be pleasant, but you know what I mean. Um, there's that sort of white winey type aroma you get from the Nelson, um, but it smells really nice actually. Just makes you want to dive in, so mm, let's give it a go. Yeah, really nice. Um, it's, despite its looks, it does actually taste quite crisp. Um, so as I said, I'd used that yeast before and something, can't remember what it was now. And it did do quite a good job. It's a bit like that uh, California common yeast, Mango Jack's one, I think. It's like a kind of hybrid lager ale yeast sort of thing. It does give you a sort of nice crisp beer. So it is quite nice and crisp. Um, there's a bit of sweetness coming from the malt. It's a lovely taste, sort of citrusy, tropical taste to back up those aromas. Um, and as a sort of, there's quite a nice assertive bitterness that sort of stays on the back of your palate for a little bit, but in a, in a pleasant way again, um, it is very nice indeed. <laughs> Although, uh, as I say, not what I set out to be, but uh, it's turned out to be um, a very nice beer in, you know, in its own right. So, you know, if you've got good ingredients and uh, you follow the basic principles of brewing, you're going to end up with a decent drinking beer at the end of it. If, yeah, maybe not how you intended it, but still get good beer, which this is. So, very drinkable. I'm not disappointed that I've got a keg full of this to drink. Um, so, I'm going to be very much enjoying this extra pale ale, I guess you'd call it, or uh, yeah, something like that. I don't know. Who cares? But it's a nice fruity, citrusy ale. Mm. So, um, yeah, I'm chalking it up as a success. I'll eventually get around to brewing a proper IPL. I've still got the yeast in the fridge, so uh, yeah, uh, watch this space for that one. But uh, hop combination, I've got to say, absolutely spot on. I'll definitely be using this hop com combo again. I think I got this from the, there's a Facebook page called Cheeky Peak, which I think is a, um, Australian uh, homebrew supplier. They got loads of recipes on their Facebook page, and um, yeah, I got I, I got the hop combo from that. So uh, that's where the inspiration for them, the hop combo came from. So um, yeah, definitely be using that again. And yeah, I'd probably brew it again as it is. To be honest, it's a it's a nice beer. It'd be great in the summer. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. So cheers.